From what the planets are like to whether they could be places to find life, join me as we explore how Tea Garden B has the highest possibility of alien life. Very recently, like found in 2019 recently, observers from Carmenis, who are a team looking for class M planets for us to habitate, found two Earth-like planets just 12.5 light years from planet Earth. Granted, that's still pretty far, and it'd take us a long time to travel there, but 12 light years is much closer than the 45,000 light years and beyond of certain other Earth-like planets that have been found. Not to mention these two planets feel like ones that could both have the necessary water and land for us to live on. The two planets resemble the inner planets of our solar system. Lead author Matthias Zeichmeister, a research scientist at the Institute for Astrophysics at the University of Goten in Germany, said in a statement, They're only slightly heavier than Earth and are located in the so-called habitable zone, where water can be present in liquid form. Research has obviously just begun on these two stars, but there is hope that they could be the real deal. For example, usually the fact that this is a red dwarf star called Tea Garden would be a red flag as they don't produce as much heat and light. But the two planets are actually closer to the sun, so that actually would work in our favor. The only true weird thing about these planets is the orbits around their sun. It takes them between one to two weeks to do it. Even less than that, in fact. That's massively quick, but if you think about it, time is only a construct, so what would really matter is how those quick orbits help or hinder the landscape. Even if these two twins aren't perfectly suitable, the team at Carmenas are hopeful that other Earth-like planets could be as close as they are, and possibly in the same system as them. But for now, let's focus on Tea Garden B and talk about why certain people think that this is the planet that has the highest probability of being a place where alien life can be found. Obviously, the biggest hurdle has been cleared in that the planet is in the habitable zone of its star, Tea Garden. You'd be surprised by how many potential Earths are out there, but few of them are in a good range from their sun, which makes them either too hot or too cold. And when you're trying to pick a planet to live on, you don't go to a planet of extremes unless you're in an extreme emergency, am I right? Anyway, on the planet Tea Garden B, you'll find that the temperature is a suitable 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit on average, which means it's a semi-hot planet. But trust me when I say you'd rather have a summer day on another planet than a freezing one or one that is so hot your skin will melt. Furthermore, as outlined earlier, there is a very good chance that Tea Garden B has water. But not just water, oceans. A lot of scientists feel that the oceans of Tea Garden B are not unlike what we have on Earth. And if that's true, that could be an even bigger sign that there is life on the planet. Not to mention if there is land masses on there and not just a water world, which hasn't been confirmed as of yet, but is likely, that would mean that it could be a near copy of Earth with just different proportions of water and land. But all of this would be moot if the star known as Tea Garden wasn't one to cooperate with the planet. What do I mean by that? Think about our own sun. Because of the distance to our star, 93 million miles in total, we don't get the brunt of the heat or the light or the radiation that it produces. We just get enough of it, and our atmosphere and magnetosphere deflects or absorbs all the other things that could potentially hurt us if we were to get it at full blast. There are many stars in the universe, and many of them have Earth-like planets surrounding them, including ones we truly believe could be the future home of humanity. The problem is that most times the stars do things like solar flares, massive bursts of energy and radiation that can destroy an atmosphere and cause untold damage to the surface of the planet that we're trying to inhabit. But in the case of Tea Garden, despite it being a red dwarf star, it doesn't act up at all. In fact, it's been known to be a rather inactive and quiet star, which is great because given the distance of Tea Garden to Tea Garden B, which is much closer than the distance from Earth to the Sun, if flares were to happen, the planet would be ravaged by it. But since that's not the case, it appears as though Tea Garden B really does have the best case scenario to produce life. Okay, so let's get to the elephant in the room here. Is it fair to believe, given what we know about the planet, that Tea Garden B has potential life on it? Well, if we take everything at face value and base what we know about the creation of life and how it can form in various places, then yeah, it's fair to believe that there is some kind of life on the planet. 
But notice the words I use there, some kind of life, as in we can't be sure by any stretch of the imagination that there is life on the planet. And at present, there is no way of knowing what kind of life is on the planet at all. I know that sounds like I'm being vague and dodging the issue, but it's the honest truth. Think about it in terms of our Earth. Imagine the roles were reversed, and Tea Garden B was looking for life on other planets and they stumbled across Earth. But not the Earth that we have now, but the Earth from the near beginnings of when life formed on it. If they looked at Earth with their technology and just looked at the surface of the planet, they likely wouldn't have seen anything. Why? Because in the beginnings of Earth's life cycle, as in the beginning of the planet, not the life of the planet itself, everything that was alive was small microorganisms. We started out, if you believe in evolution and the Big Bang, as single-celled organisms, then became multi-celled organisms, then animals, then big animals, and after a series of extinction-level events, humans came around. The point we're trying to make here is that this was a process that took years, millions and even billions of years depending on who and what you believe. So what if, and this technically is a possibility, what if life on Tea Garden is there right now, but it too is only in the beginning stages? After all, there's no definitive way of knowing when the spark of life hit the planet, which is the same as Earth. We can guess when life started to sprout, but we can't know for certain, and that's the key thing. So what if there is life on the planet, but we just won't be able to see it until we get there? Which would be a big problem, as it's 12.5 light years away, and we can barely travel to the moon and back without a lot of effort, let alone to other planets in our solar system, and even planets in other systems. It's going to take a while for us to figure out how to travel there. But let's speculate for a bit. What kind of life could be there? Well, it would honestly depend on the surface of the planet and what's there and what's not. A common misconception about Earth is that it literally just grew into what we have now. It didn't at all. In fact, one of the great extinction events I mentioned earlier was called the Great Oxygenation, where plants started to learn how to do photosynthesis, which is a key part of life today. But back then? Well, let's just say the planet and its creatures weren't used to oxygen being around in such a great supply. It almost killed everything. But then creatures got used to the oxygen. The atmosphere developed into what we have now and life found a way to keep going. So to know what is on Tea Garden B is to know what conditions are there for life to grow from. We don't know a lot about the surface of the planet and if it is mostly water, or even mostly land, that'll affect what can grow there. Let's say for a second that Tea Garden B is mostly a water planet. That would mean that more than likely, most life that we would find would be underwater creatures of some shape or size, which would make it all the more difficult for us to find the creatures if we can't look beyond the ocean surface. Still, it's very possible that they are there. There could even be life in the vents that connect to the core of the planet. We've recently found here on Earth creatures that feed off the heat and warmth of geothermal vents and are quite advanced. If life works similarly on Tea Garden B, that would mean that there could be microscopic creatures clinging to the vents and making their way through life like certain creatures here on Earth. Or it could be that the planet is so advanced in its life right now that they're at the fishes stage or other aquatic creatures, to be fair. Let's cast a wide net on this, okay? But what about if there's land? What kind of creatures could be born there? Well, just like the Earth, it would depend on the kind of land. Is it a desert? A mountain area? A long stretch of dirt? We need more information. And don't forget, we can't say for certain that there are plants as we know them on Tea Garden B. If there isn't, that would drastically change the ecosystems of the world in regards to how we perceive them. Which, of course, brings us to one of the biggest questions of them all. Atmosphere. The best we can tell, Tea Garden does have an atmosphere, but given the technology we have, there is no way of knowing what comprises the atmosphere. Never forget, Earth's atmosphere is not 100% oxygen. In fact, it's a mix of gases that come together to give us the balance we need to live. It may work similarly on Tea Garden B, or it could be vastly different. And no matter what the composition it is, it's going to affect what lives on the planet if anything is allowed to live there at all. It's true that we think we know what can cause life or not on planets, but even we acknowledge that evolution and other things can lead to surprising kinds of life, 
not unlike the microorganisms that live in the geothermal vents. But until we get at least a hint of what the atmosphere is like, we're going to be guessing as to what may or not be there and guesses only take us so far. So in truth, knowing all of these factors, it's fair to say that Tea Garden B could have life on it. And it's also fair to say that there could be something we don't know about that prevents the planet from having life. That's not meant to be a slight, it's just the truth. More times than you might think we found planets that are Earth-like in their positioning, their size and more, but then hopes are dashed when certain factors make it clear that this isn't the place we'd hoped it would be. Whether it be the sun having flares that destroy the atmosphere and thus make colonizing it moot, or the surface conditions not being what we hoped, the atmosphere not being balanced, etc. There are a lot of things that can go wrong with the planet, and all it takes is one of them to make it uninhabitable to life as we know it. In many ways, that's why the search for alien life continues on because for all of our advances in life, we haven't been able to definitively state that there is life in the cosmos beyond ourselves. We've had hints, teases, mysteries, and possibilities, but nothing confirmed. That's why planets like Tea Garden B intrigue us so much, because these are the planets that match up with what we know about life as a whole, and we hope to learn much more about them to see whether our beliefs, our expectations, and more are fair and accurate. And should Tea Garden B not be what we think it is, it just means that we'll go and look for another planet that might be like Earth. There are plenty of planets and stars out there for us to look at after all. Of course, there's also the chance that there isn't life out there in the stars outside of Earth, which I know sounds like a bad thing, but we've lived just fine without alien contact, don't you think? Either way, the search continues, and it'll continue until answers, true answers, are found.